Greetings Adventures, this is Lorne, your Guild Advisor, and welcome to the long-awaited spoiler talk, spoiler discussion video for Is It Wrong to Try to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon? On the side, Sword Oratoria, Volume 12. The big endgame-esque novel to the first half of Sword Oratoria, because Mori Sensei did say that Volume 14, the main series, is like the halfway point, so you would assume that with a volume that we just read through with this, that this would be the halfway point for Sword of Retoria, and pretty much everything from Volume 1 through 12 is one whole big story arc, and I'm really curious to see what's next, but of course, this video is going to highlight one of my favorite parts of this novel, and of course, uh, what are some issues I have with it, not too many, and just highlight my favorite parts, and then you guys can add in the comments that you feel about the novel as well, because there's a lot of stuff to talk about, because this is a very meaty novel, we'll just put this up above in front of the sort of Rotoria box set because that makes sense to do. So without further ado, let's get started. And of course, Sword of Rotoria is written by Fujino Omori Sensei, the author of the Damachi light novel series, every Damachi light novel. And you can probably see that here in my bookshelf in my new setup because I moved recently. And the art, of course, is always done by Kiyotake Haimura Sensei. The original character designs are done by Tsuchito Yasuda. Going through the Sword of Retoria Volume 12 translation, just reading it, really makes you, if you guys have been playing the Damachi mobile game, Memoria Freeze, and have been going through the third anniversary event, which is called Estrella Record, which is about seven years in the past, the present day Damachi, and it's about the time when the Dark Familias were still at large. And it's a lot of it has to do with Estrella Familia Ryu's old Familia, with uh, Elise as the captain, and Estrella as the goddess, of course and all of them fighting against the evils. And the translation for the event story in the game is not the greatest, and it's just super, super apparent when going through an official, like, light novel translation by Yen Press. So we we really don't know what we have with Yen Press. Like, I know we, sometimes we get frustrated with delays, especially with Main Series 14, but I'd rather take the delays than, than see something pushed out like uh, how Story of Records translation is. But let's go back to Sword of Volume 12. We leave off of Volume 11 in very low spirits because it's pretty much just a defeat. That first assault on Gnosis pretty much ended in failure. The entirety of Dionysus, Familia, or so we think, has been completely wiped out and everyone is just super low in spirits and we're in that phase where we're just preparing for the second attack. And there's a lot of preparations that are being made and one really cool thing is a place i don't think we've seen before called the great library of gnomes loki familia like uh tiona tione and eyes all go there to get information about need hog about that mural that was seen when uh, lafia and philbus uh, saw that in the room with uh, thanatos and they're trying to figure out what it all means and they figure out, of course, they had to go to my boy, Bell, who is walking around town with Lily. And this is post-volume 14, Bell. And if you see one of the illustrations, prob probably my favorite illustration in novel, because it's something I really wasn't expecting. The illustration, the Heimer Sensei did of like the entirety of Hestia Familia. And you just see Bell's arm, like, have all those like stones in them because it's still recovering like man we're really and then towards the end of the novel like man we're really pushing bell really hard especially with what happened in volumes 12 through 14 and of course tiona is the person that uh, goes and pursues bell and asks if he knows anything about need hog and he he recognizes the mural instantly he's like oh you mean this story like of course bell would know and tiona she's just precious all the time throughout this novel like any scene she's in like Precious. Precious. And of course, that's when we find out about that ritual with the the six maidens using the uh, spirit ring to destroy Neat Hog. And also during this time, Lefia is super down about what happened to Philbus. And we you know, we all know that Philbus didn't really die. And I wish... It it sucks, guys. It really sucks. Because before, before I read Volume 11, I was spoiled about Philbus dying. And then of course, like, ne don't... If you care about spoilers at all, don't even don't even consider looking at the Damachi Wikia. Because for some reason, I, I was trying to find out something about Philbus. I wanted to make sure of something. Then I see Philbus is Ein. I'm like, oh my god, really? Before I read Volume 12? I'm like, oh, it's There's still a lot of impact there. And I really like uh, Philbus and Lafia's story arc together. But man, it... <laughs> If I didn't see that spoiler, it would hit it would hit so much harder. And it's just it's just super frustrating. 
And I love how we finally have like an illustration for one of the Xenos that isn't Wiene. We got an illustration of Rey, and I love her little scene with uh, Alicia and Tione. And of course, Tione thinks like everything, everyone is a threat against her love for Finn, of course, naturally. And then Alicia is like struggling to like thank Rey for what she did because uh, some people in Loki Familia are still struggling with the fact that the Xenos are monsters and that they're actually intelligent and not inherently bad. But again, I'm so happy we got an illustration for her and hopefully we get more illustrations of the Xenos besides like Asterios, Rey, and Wiene. I really love the art for Rey as she's depicted in this volume. And we got some cameos of some other characters during this con before the storm. We got Luvis and Dormal, the elf and the dwarf that were first introduced in the main series volume 8. They were like stalking Aina and Bell was the bodyguard. And then of course Bell rescued them during the expedition arc in volume 12. So it's cool to see them come back here during Sword of Retoria because like almost everybody you know in Damachi comes back during this volume. It's so cool. It really is like Endgame if you ever follow the Marvel movies. Like everyone is here. We're all here to take part in this battle for Orario. And we even have a small scene with Hestia taking care of some of the orphanage kids because she's taken a liking to them as well. And then Demeter, like I think in my last uh, discussion video regarding sort of Rotorio volume 11, I'm like, Demeter, super suspicious because that's the, the thing that the wine points to because I found out, was it like volume two? It was one of the pre one of the volumes at the very beginning of sort of Rotorio where like grapes and divine wine were mentioned. It, it was Demeter. And I said, like, I don't, I wasn't sure if she was Enyo, but I knew she was related. And then, of course, we get our answer right here. Dio is Enyo. And also, the illustration at the, the color illustration at the very beginning of the novel of Enyo. Really like that as well. I just think it's so cool that everything, like, in sort of Toria, like, volume 1 through 12 was, like, planned out already from the beginning. It, it's just so cool that Amori Sensei, like, he wasn't even going to do sort of Toria at first. I forgot, one of the afterwards said like, it was like after volume 4 of the main series, they asked if he wanted to do a side series, and he he basically just made an outline for volumes 1 through 12, I guess, because everything has been set up from volume 1 all the way to this, and if all of this was like made as an outline years ago, I can't wait to see what he has in store for us next in Servitoria, because that just means, because his writing has been improving more and more, like, my favorite volumes of the series are all towards the later half of both series, like volumes, the Zenos arc, the expedition arc, uh, volume 12 of Sword of is my favorite Sword of Toria volume. I'm really impressed that Amori Sensei was basically able to tie in everything from all the previous Sword of Toria novels back into this one. It's so cool to see. Even Kali Familia comes back. And I was a bit confused because it's been a, a while since I've read volume 6. Like, what is Kali Familia still doing in Marin? Or maybe they're just trying to get stronger. I know. Uh, you see that Argana has this attachment to Finn now and she's competing against Tione with that like oh boy We got a little Amazon war against Finn now. This is gonna be interesting But that was that was just the one bit of confusing So like they didn't go back to the island because there's no way that Ospi could take that message for Hermes to uh, Telescuria or however that islands pronounced and then them to come back They would have to have been at Madden Cal Kali Familia to be, able, to be able to help them back in Orario and going back to Demeter, you you really feel for her here. Like she's in a very tough spot. They're like Familia being taken hostage by Dio. And a lot of clues like connected to Demeter. Like she's her familia is one with access to and uh, in and out of Rario very easily because they are like in charge of the main food supply. And I'm like, wait, if the if Demeter Familia like disappears, aren't they gonna have like a food crisis? And and thankfully. Uh, later on in the novel, they were able to get the hostages out of Gnosis, so that's really good. Even Persephone was was taken care of. And I still want to see what Persephone looks like, and part of me was worried about Lunar as well, because she's technically in Demeter Familia, because she has the blessing from Demeter, so I was kind of worried about her. But I guess Dio didn't know. And then that part in the, the novel where uh, Royman tells Misha, to, to go to the benevolent mistress, the pub, uh, for help. Misha's like, why do we need to go there? Like, bro, Misha, there's some powerful people in that in that pub that can help out with the situation or Arya. You got Mia, level six, former captain of Freya Familia. You got level four, Chloe, level four, Lunar. Like, they, they got some power in there that can help the, uh, the surface when the violas start popping out. 
Now let's go back to Dio again. I was really impressed with how Amori Sensei was able to like call back on certain clues that were placed throughout the series in Sorgatoria. Like I didn't think anything of, of Penia, the, the old lady goddess, and then calling out that wine bottle that she had like, oh my gosh. And then uh, how Dio like says he even made himself drunk on that on that wine so he could trick himself into believing he was innocent. Like that's a, that's a move I recognize from other anime. Like, oh my, cause when I was dreaming, like don't tell me that he drank. Yes, he did. Oh my gosh, he did the mad man. And Dio was making up excuses in the very beginning of this. It's like, well, my reasonings for, for doing all of this is because before the adventurers didn't even need blessings before the gods weren't even here. They were able to fight uh, without the gods. So I want to see that happen again. I'm going to reset this world and Loki calls him out on that crap. He's like, you just want to see everyone suffer, don't you? And then we get that term, Orgia. Like, this is what I want to see. People suffering. Like, he even says how how tragically beautiful Philbus' uh, fate is, her appearance, because she got resurrected uh, in the same way that Olivius did, or Olivus did, with that magic stone in her. And, and the corrupted spirit and that, that's the one of the more interesting points in here. It's like, where did this corrupted spirit even come from? Like, it seems to have come from somewhere inside the dungeon. And then Dio was super excited that he got to meet with it. And then, and, and they said that they were attracted to Aiz's spirit ancestry because Arya is supposedly her mother, who, and Arya is a spirit. And I'm really curious to see what Amori Sensei is doing with this corrupted spirit. Like, where did this corrupted spirit come from? Why is it corrupted in the first place? Uh, he says, like, the dungeon wants to be open, the dungeon's at its limit, like, what's what's going on with the dungeon? And there are several things that I'm very curious about regarding, like, how important Sword of Ritoria is going to be to the main series, and uh, I'll, I'll dive a bit more into that as we get to another point in a novel uh, discussion point when I'm talking about both Eyes and Ravis and their involvement in this novel. But let's start going over the actual assault in Tanasis. We have the different groups, the six different groups assigned to six different locations because of the uh, six different uh, demi spirits and they need to destroy those to disrupt the ritual. And we have that combined force with Ganesha Familia and Loki Familia. Uh, Hermes joins the fight later on and uh, Dion Keck but Amid of course. So we got a big substantial force and uh, they, they put Hephaestus Familia into overtime with their blacksmiths working and, and Subaki mentions it too because they're using those those cloths to defend against those magic blasts from all those masks and even uh, being assaulted by magic at the very beginning when they enter Gnosis. It was really cool to see that. And a very interesting monster type when it comes to like the demi spirits uh, all being protected by like this three masked monster that can all shoot magic at different times at the same time. And like, like from any location, which is nuts. So everyone had their hands full with that. And then Aki, Bet, and Lafia's group got like cut in half with Bet and Lafia being dropped down in a pitfall with Philvis uh, when she reveals herself when, when uh, Ayn comes in. And let's just start talking about Philvis and Ayn and the cloning magic. Like, oh my gosh. Like I said, I already had a clue about Philvis and Ayn's connection. And then uh, when you see like two of them, like you start thinking cloning magic. And, uh, and again, I did mention this in the general review. I was very happy with Lafia's character development, just uh, her development across Sword of Rhetoria, because at first, uh, Lafia isn't that enjoyable of a character to, to read about, because at first she's really annoying, but as the series goes on, she, of course, develops, and she gets really awesome here, because she gets that double cannon skill when she can, like, hold a magic cast for later, which is very unique. Like, Lafia's starting to become OP. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, she can hold a magic cast do something else and she already can copy other elven magic so it's and it makes me curious if she was able to copy that cloning magic i don't think she was because i don't think Philbus exactly told her how to do it like with dio grail but before i like get into uh, how the Philbus fight ends like oh and then when the reinforcements come in i was super excited because of course ryu is my favorite character and it was so cool to see her here like both Ryu and Bell went through a heck of a lot of stuff in Volume 14, and here they are, both still recovering. And of course, it's it's in their nature to help out with this, because Ryu still has that sense of justice, and then Bell, of course, aspiring hero. Of course, they're here to protect Rario, 
but they're still recovering. They're not, they're not at full strength. And it was really cool to see Aisha come in as well. You have that Aisha, Asfi, and Ryu combo once more like in Volume 10 in the main series. And Asfi's making that battleground of weapons, like surrounding Philbus with them. And Philbus is like, what are you even doing? And then Ryu's coming in, like picking up swords off the ground, weapons off the ground, just continuously assaulting Philbus. Uh, like she did, uh, like did a relentless assault against Eyes in Volume 10 in Sorgatoria. It was so cool. It was like unlimited Blade Works esque. Like Ryu striking with the weapon, it being destroyed and grabbing a new one. It was so cool. And then, of course, Asfi with her little sneak magic weapon in there, uh, throwing a burst oil at that, trying to deal some damage to Philvis. And even like. Uh, Lafia and Ryu combining their magic together against Silvus wasn't enough because as we learn uh, with the uh, with her being split between Ayn and herself when they combined together it's said that they might be stronger than than Ravis like oh boy this is gonna, this is gonna be something and she's stronger than, than Ravis and whenever she uses that lightning magic like it's it's deadly and but before Ryu and and folks come in there was a really graphic description of when Bet was fighting Philvis, and it said like he took a kick to the side of the face, and then his his brain ricocheted off the his like the inside of his skull. I'm like, what, what more is said to say? Like sometimes it's hard to to get like my my real life. Uh, like if that were to happen to you, if your brain is bouncing around your head in real life, you are you are dead. <laughs> You're, you're dead. That that shouldn't happen, right? But of course, this is Don Machi, and what we've seen this time and time again, like, these are adventurers with the gods' blessing, so they don't necessarily have to bend to the rules that we have in our head of, of what type of injuries that people can withstand. But it, it, it's still something to read that, that Bet's brain was ricocheting off the inside of his head, and he's still fine somehow. But yeah, as you can probably tell, like, that second wave of adventurers coming in, even Freya Familia. Like, I was always curious. I'm like, there's no way Freya Familia is not going to be involved in this because you got to help defend Rario. If, there, if you want to be top dog in Rario, there needs to be an Rario, right? And of course, they're part of the second wave. Otaro, of course, going in to help Aki's group because they're, they lost the most amount of people because they got split from Bet and Lafia and half the crew. And oh gosh, it was. It was super hype when Asterios came in. I'm like, oh boy. Like, guys, don't tell him that Bell's here. Uh, Bell's not in the best shape to be fighting Asterios right now. And Asterios talks, which is nuts as well. And of course, you have Alan reluctantly, of course. Everything Alan does is reluctant when it comes to things outside Freya Familia. And even when helping uh, with some requests in Freya Familia, he's reluctant to do it. And of course, he gets paired up with Finn. And before they even get sent out, Freya asks uh, Alan if he's going to throw a tantrum. <laughs> I thought that was a, a really funny diss towards Alan because he's always complaining about stuff, always loud mouth. And man, I really, I really want to see an interaction between Alan and Anya at some point in the actual novels because we, we had that in uh, we had that in Don Ma in Don Memo, the mobile game, but we didn't. I don't think we've seen like their interactions in the main series or Sword of Retoria yet. So really curious to see if they're ever going to interact. And then Heedon and Hogni both come in to help Reveria and they're they're both elves and one of them pays their respects to Reveria. So it's cool that there's like that respect towards Reveria because she's a high elf. And then you had the level six Bosch and Argana help Tiona and Tione's group. And of course, you know, like I mentioned before, Argana like talks about Finn to Tione and they start arguing. But again, Tiona, precious, precious relationship with Bosch because uh, she actually defeated Bosch, whereas Tione uh, had Finn help her defeat Argana in Volume Six of Sword Oratoria. And Tiona, just just a precious relationship with Bosch. Like uh, she's earned Bosch's respect, and then Bosch like starts talking about the the tales that Tiona reads, and she mentions Argonaut, and she's curious about who Bell is. Like oh boy. It's just, just all precious things around Tiona. And how can we not talk about when Hestia Familia actually comes in, when we get that double page art spread of them together? They come in and kind of almost save the day in a way. And that of course is Hermes, like trump card, his joker as you will. 
Bell being the person that defied the gods in Volume 11. Like, he defied Hermes' master plan to, like, basically uh, get his reputation back by going against Gross. Bell believed in Gross, and, and the whole Zeno situation was still resolved with Bell still being true to who he is. And Lily comes in and actually demands to take command of two of the groups that Finn is commanding, because somehow Finn is like playing 40 chess and trying to order six different battlefronts around. So Lily takes two, and Finn tr actually trusts her enough to do so, which is which is a really cool thing to see. And Lily, Lily's development is very nice. Like how she's starting to become like this leader in the group and starting to take charge more and trying to give out orders. You see it in volume 14, and you see her still trying to become that leader here in Servitoria Volume 12. She takes command on the fronts with uh, Riveria and Gareth helping her along. And she does a pretty good job. And she sends uh, Welf to help out Riveria and she sends Mikito to help out Gareth's group. And they make a difference right away because Mikito's magic is gravity and that helped a ton. And I really liked that scene with Welf helping Riveria's group because he has two very useful things. Like he has his endless magic sword that he made in Volume 14, the main series. And he has that Will-O-Wisp uh, skill, that magic uh, spell, that can just disrupt enemy spell casts and uh, force a Ignis Fatus in their face and it just explode. And that's very useful when uh, the main thing they were having problems with uh, during this is all those magic being, all that magic being used. And then all the elves in the group were like, this this guy, <laughs> Welf is like the, the antithesis to any like elves because He's a Crotso, they have that bad reputation of uh, helping Rakia burn down a lot, of the, a lot of the elven forest. And of course that Will-O-Wisp spell uh, just completely disrupts any magic. So Lily did a good job sending uh, Mikito and Wells to those locations. And then we have Haruhime, uh, like what do I do? And then Aisha brings her along to help against Filvis. And we, we got that pseudo uh, level boost to Aisha, Ryu, and Aspi making them level 5. And then Towards the end of that Philvis encounter, we got Bet being woken up by Lena. I love the relationship, and the novel's hilarious because it says, uh, "No one knows how to uh, piss <laughs> Bet off more than Lena. She's a master. He'll she'll get him to wake up, and he gets to be a uh, skiddo level seven and try to make a match against Philvis. And uh, with the combined strength of both uh, Bet." and Lafia, they were able to take Philvis down, and Lafia takes her down in such an emotional way because Philvis uses that lightning spell, and then Lafia uses Philvis' own spell that Philvis taught Lafia, Dio Grail, to protect herself, and then she makes the final stab, that final strike, with Philvis' own sword, that one she discarded, that she said she didn't need anymore, and puts it into her core, and it's just, it's just super emotional, and I, I love how this relationship was built up between Philbus and Lafia because that was one of my favorite parts of Sorgatoria. Because I always liked when Lafia was with Philbus because it was a lot better than when, when she's like fangirling over eyes. It was always better when she was with Philbus. And I think as heavy as this is for Lafia, like she's able to, to move past this and become a stronger character because of it. But man, it, it, was, it was so heavy and emotional during that fight with Philbus and Lafia. And counterpoint to that, as I said in my general review of Sorgatoria 12, is the whole fight between Eyes and Ravis. This is something that was teased in Volume 11 because Eyes was training against Otaro to basically uh, get stronger. And Otaro taught her to like use that Avengers skill, but use it to to protect your comrades, save people, not not in revenge. So. Ravis and Eyes do fight, and it's a very cool fight. Like lots of nice descriptions, like the. Uh, Avenger Tempest and then we got like that black wind surrounding eyes and she's able to just destroy like the floor of Gnosis and we know it's made like adamantite and it's super hard to destroy but she was just able to do it instantly and that gets Ravis pretty much away from the rest of the groups because she won't be able to make it to any of them with uh, where eyes has taken them so they just start battling against each other and Ravis combines herself with like the flesh of Gnosis and they do have a really cool fight. It's just, we didn't, it was pretty anticlimactic because it was, I think it was obvious that eyes would prevail. Like 
and that's not a knock because we always expect our heroes to win in a series like Don Machi, but it felt anticlimactic in a way because we never really know like who Ravis was even supposed to be. We know she was like fixated on uh, eyes being related to Arya, but we don't know why. We don't know who Ravis exactly was, and then she was pretty much just just tossed away. We, we defeated her, and we didn't learn anything about her, and we still have questions about where she came from, what the corrupted spirit is. And, like, I, I understand that, uh, of course, we still have questions about where the corrupted spirit came from and what else is in the dungeon, but we didn't learn, like, anything about who Ravis actually was, and that was my problem. And I think, like, we're not going to get too many, like, big revelations about who Eyes is as a character because this is the side series, and I think... Omori Sensei said in like one of the afterwards or some interview that like he can't like he wants to save any big revelations about eyes for the main series because there are people that do not read Sword of Retoria, so they'll be lost if like they uh, if the main series like acknowledges like some big plot points from Sword of Retoria and people will just get confused about that. And that's the very weird relationship that Sword of Retoria and the main series has because Sword Retoria, of course, assumes you read the main series, but the main series does not assume you read Sword Retoria. And that, that creates some weird things where, like, there are these huge events that happen in Sword Retoria, and they're not acknowledged, really, in, in the main series. Besides, like, uh, Ryu getting one of those Gnosis keys in Volume 5 of Sword Retoria, and then it popping back up later on in one of the volumes related to the Xenos arc in the main series. But that's, like, the only thing I can think of that's been acknowledged by the main series that happens in Servitoria. I don't think Lafia is mentioned by name even once in the main series. And whenever Volume 15 comes out, and which is apparently November 17th uh, in English, I'm really curious to see if they like mention anything about what happens here in Volume 12 of Servitoria at all, because this is a huge event. Like even uh, though Finn says no one in Rario is like the citizens aren't going to know what happened today because it will happen below the dungeon. But we will be heroes, like and, and heroes that no one even knows about. But hopefully, it's acknowledged in some way in Volume 15. I hope Amori Sensei like starts like encouraging people to read Sword of Retoria because it's really good. And Volume 12 was like the penultimate reason of why you should read Sword of Retoria. But yeah, those are my frustrations with Ravis. And we have that cool little ending where uh, Bell is charging up the Argonauts, and then the chime is sounding everywhere. You got the Bringar uh, commenting on it, like we can't tell Lady Freya about this, or she's gonna be more obsessed with Bell. And then uh, Eyes hears that chime, and then the Black Flames that she's about to be consumed by her her rage, like she was surrendering to it to defeat Ravis. It becomes a white light and then she's able to beat Ravis and then she thanks Bell silently later on because he's sleeping. But let's go back a bit in the novel when Bell is making his way to help like the uh, Loki Familia groups that are trying to free the hostages like the Meter Familia's uh, members. Like it was so cool to see him just lay waste to all the violas with his SD knife and hockey gun combo and even using the scarf in there. That's awesome and he's doing that with his like bum arm too. Again, his arm looks so cool in the in the art, like the, like the magic stones or whatever is like bracing them together. It's it's nuts. He, he looks crazy doing this stuff. And then of course, like he, he asked to borrow a longsword, and time and time again, Bell like has to borrow like a weapon, like a bigger weapon besides his like short sword and his dagger. Like Bell, just just get wealth to make you an actual longsword, please, <laughs> instead of borrowing one every time you can. Like, if you're going to keep using a longsword, you might as well have your own. <laughs> and then one really funny scene is when uh, Bell does indeed use Argonauts on the the seventh hidden chamber, that uh, pseudo, like, black dragon demi-spirit, not to be confused with the actual one-eyed black dragon. That's, a, that's supposedly the, uh, the end goal of Damachi. But after he does away and finishes that off and foils Dio's plans because Bell is not part of Dio's plans because he said he like made a lot of this uh, this plan six years ago and Bell wasn't in Terrario six years ago he came in Terrario like six months ago and he's level four now and it's it's crazy like Bell's defying the gods in in so many ways with how fast he's leveling up how he was able to uh resolve the Zeno situation without uh following Hermes' master plan, and again, he's defying the gods, this time Dio's master plan for his Orgia. 
And we have that funny scene when uh, Raul hugs Belle. I just thought that was funny for some reason. And I think part of what makes the fights in Damamachi so, so good is that a lot of them are like very, very personal. They're my favorite fights. Like th there is some personal stuff with Ravis and Aiz's fight, but we don't know what, what Ravis is like background is with Arya. We just know she's fixated on her and, and, and the uh, corrupt spirit is interested in eyes, but nothing more than that. Like the Minotaur and Bell, it's a very personal fight. Asterios and Bell is a very personal fight. Eyes' fight against Bell in volume 10 of Sword of Rhetoria and volume 11 of the main series is super personal. Like it's a more personal fight than of course the one against Ravis that keeps building up across here. Uh, even even Bet and Vleta's personal in a way, but that, I think Vleta is just, she was a fun villain and she was only around for like two volumes, which is why it's not as frustrating that she was gone really fast. Like they did, uh, Omori Sensei did build up some backstory between her and Finn and we got even more of it uh, in Estrella Record if you go through the Damachi Mobile event, uh, game event. And of course that fight between Philvis and Lafia. That's the fight, that's the, the personal battle that had the most weight behind it because they've built up that relationship between Philvis and Lafia across these volumes and you can't really say the same thing for Ravis and Eyes because there's not much going on between them like uh, like communication wise like Ravis isn't he's like Aria Aria like what, what do you Ravis what do you, what do you want <laughs> what do you want with her Oh yeah, and then cool little touch, like as Dio was like explaining his master plan, he mentions Estrella Familia, like oh, I'm glad they're gone, like how, how dare you, how dare you say this stuff after volume 14 of the main series and, and Ryu's pain, and, during, and as I'm reading through Estrella record, how dare you Dio, how dare you mention Estrella Familia like that, I hate you. But yeah, the situation in Volume 12 is resolved. Like the first, the first like big overarching plot in Soratoria is finished, and we don't know really what's coming next besides like uh, those clues about the dungeon wanting to be open, the dungeon reaching its limit. I'm wondering how that's going to relate uh, to the main series as well, because that that has been one of the goals uh, in in just Damage, like reaching the bottom of the dungeon. What is down there? Where did this corrupted spirit come from? How did it get corrupted? And even in the afterward, Amori Sensei is like, he, he said that volume 12 was the hardest uh, one he had to write, and previously that was volume 14, so it, it, I think he's just, he keeps trying to outdo himself uh, each and every time, and that's really cool to see, and he's just improving as an author. But he did call the next arc the Fairy Awakening arc, and he said that Suratoria was taking a break. We don't know how long that break is going to be, uh, because Suratoria volume 12 was released in Japan in... Uh, June 2019 and there still is an announcement for the next Soratoria volume which would be 13 so who knows how long that break is going to be. Uh, there was over a year break for the main series as well with uh, regarding the Japanese release schedule because that also came out in June uh, 2019 and then uh, volume 16 in Damachi is coming out I think it's I think it's October and Amori Sensei also said that this is probably the best battle he, he will ever write and I'm like and then he teases like oh maybe Maybe the uh, the very end of the series will, will be good too. I'm like, <laughs> it better be. It's supposedly uh, against the the one eye black dragon, which seems to be like the end boss of Danmachi. So, and it's gonna be an even bigger scale than, than what this was, which is insane. Like one thing I always like about Amori Sensei is how he's able to like take all these characters that he's written and then bring them together and manage them so well. Like especially in this volume, where pretty much all the main familias were taking part in this. Uh, I'm not sh I don't remember if Mia Familia took part in this, but I, I assume they would uh, be helping out on the surface, especially with the healing stuff. But like pretty much every Familia had, in Damachi, had involvement in this novel. Who knows how long it's going to take to get to the end of Damachi, but that final battle against the Black Dragon, like how is that going to go down? And of course Freya still has that favor uh, that uh, she needs the request of eyes. Eyes still owes Freya for training with Otaro, so at some point that's going to come back and I can't think it's not going to involve Belle. It has to involve Belle in some way because Freya doesn't like how close that uh, eyes and Belle are getting. And that reminds me, I can't believe I didn't, I didn't say this before because I love Ryu, but uh, in the middle of this novel when uh, the reinforcements come uh, with Ryu coming in with uh, Lulunae and Asfi, 
they, they mention that Hestia Familia is coming in to help as well, and then she hears Bell get mentioned, and then she trips. <laughs> I love that. Such a nice, nice callback to Volume 14 because of the stuff that happens between the two. But yeah, that pretty much uh, covers uh, the main points I like to talk about with Soratoria Volume 12. I'm sure there's things I missed, and uh, if you guys want to leave some comments on your favorite parts or anything that I missed that you want to discuss, go ahead and just leave that in the comments below. Again, we don't know when Sloratoria Volume 13 comes out, so I can't say look forward to this review because I don't know when that's happening. Uh, but we do have Familia Chronicle Episode Freya announced for October 20th, and then uh, Main Series Damachi Volume 15 announced for November 17th. So we still have Damachi happening in the fall, and of course the third season of the anime happening in the fall as well. So it's the fall of Damachi uh, when we get to that point. But anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this spoiler talk video discussion about Sergatoria Volume 12. If you want to see more Don Machi content, go ahead and give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, follow me on Twitter, and join my Discord. And as always, continue enjoying your time venturing your audio and the dungeon. This is Lorne, your guild advisor, signing out. <laughs> Ima era bo, so no